welcome to Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we are in the studio with one of the three candidates looking for the select board seat. Here is Matt Taylor. Welcome. Hi, Maribel. It's great to be here with you. Thank you. We're going to get to know you today. And can you tell the viewers about yourself and your family? Yeah. Hi, my neighbors. Uh, I'm just so grateful to be here with you and with all of you out there. Uh, and I want to talk about the important discussions that are facing our whole community. Uh, I'm Matt Taylor. Uh, I'm a numbers guy who listens. Uh, what does that mean? It means I studied computer science at Cornell University. Uh, and my background is in building software for data analytics. Um, and I'm used to leading and advising successful startups. Uh, and I'm running for the open seat on our select board uh, because I love Belmont and I love our community. And with my entrepreneurial and data science and startup leadership background, I have the precise skill set that will help us make the critical decisions that we are facing and give our community the best possible outcomes. Matt, what brought you to Belmont and how long have you been living here? Yeah, great question. So my family settled in Belmont in 2014 and we live on Edgemoor Road, just up the hill from the Veterans Memorial by the Burbank School. Uh, my wife and I uh, lived in Queens, New York. We had a, a one bedroom apartment and a one year old and you'd wake up in the morning with your one-year-old staring at you over the edge of the crib. We said, we need to move. Uh, and so during our prolonged uh, uh, house hunt, uh, we fell in love with Belmont uh, and the community and the opportunity to be part of a community that was surrounded by neighbors who cared for each other and who valued public education. Uh, my wife is a writer and went to BC, so we had both lived in the Boston area before. And now we have two kids. Uh, one goes to the Burbank School and the other one goes to Chenery, and we love it here. Matt, what do you do for work? I currently work for myself as a data scientist and an advisor. Uh, think helping CEOs with their toughest challenges and their biggest opportunities. Uh, but I'll be honest, I'm pulling back from my career uh, to focus on Belmont because I think the challenges that we're facing and the opportunities ahead of us are too important. Uh, because I work for myself, I'm fortunate to have that kind of flexibility. Uh, and I think local, is the kind of scale that someone like me can make a huge positive difference and I have a lot of relevant experience, new ideas, fresh energy. Uh, I think it's really important to have someone like me in the room. Uh, previously, I was CTO and a board observer for a successful startup in Harvard Square. Uh, I managed a big team, uh, helped create a culture of empowerment and innovation. Uh, we were all about using data and precedence to better understand financial investments and it turns out that learning from the past and seeing what has succeeded and worked elsewhere is highly relevant to our local government and what we can do for our community. I'm really excited to help. Matt, how have you served Belmont over these years? Yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, please don't underestimate because I'm somewhat new to formal volunteering. I've been studying municipal data for more than a decade and before I wanted your vote and before I was on any committee, I started 02478.org because it is so hard to know what is going on unless you're already in the loop. And because I spent so much time and work learning about how Belmont operated from uh, a regular resident's perspective, I have a lot of empathy and compassion for how hard it is to know how Belmont operates unless you're already on the inside. I built the Belmont Visual Budget, so you can go to 02478.org, and so regular folks can see where our dollars are spent. I built a website to highlight the hard work of the Structural Change Impact Group report. This is a 481-page PDF filled with 135 ideas on how to improve Belmont. And this is really on brand for me. It is elevating the work of others and empowering them to make sure we follow through. You can go to 02478.org and find that list, search the ideas, and link to them directly. This is new capabilities, fresh ideas, and an outreach to residents that I hear and I feel deeply that uh, our residents really want and that our local government can be closer. Now these days, I'm also a formal volunteer. I'm very active and informed town meeting member in Precinct 1, and I'm also a member of our warrant committee, you might know as our finance committee. Uh, and I'm not what you might picture as a numbers guy on the finance committee. I was appointed in part because of my focus on community, on using data and evidence-based decisions, and using visuals to make how Belmont works and operates more accessible to everyday residents. So I've spent years listening uh, to residents and working to help answer their questions about Belmont. And it's these residents who said to me early last year, 
Matt Taylor, you're the kind of person we want on the select board. So why do you decide to run? We need someone like me on the select board. It's why you see such a broad base of regular residents endorsing me on mattforbelmont.com and they're displaying the red, white, and blue Matt Taylor yard signs. My supporters see me as entrepreneurial, data science, and startup leadership background as a necessary skill to navigate the changes facing our town. They see my passion for listening and connecting with residents and say, yes, we want more of that in our local government. We're at a major fork in the road. If we choose the status quo, we will undermine the scale needed to really invest in our shared infrastructure and services. I'm a big proponent of goal driven action, and we can be intentional about our future. And I feel like we can't snowplow these decisions one year more. The time is now, and we need to do this now. What experience do you have that you think you make, make you a good fit for this uh, position? Yeah, one thing I learned as a startup leader uh, as a power is the power of a big, important goal. Big, important goals help us prioritize our time. They help us focus our collective work. They help us unify our effort toward a common direction that really matters. It also gives us a clear way to empower others and communicate progress to the broad base of residents so that you're all in the loop. We've been talking about commercial de development in a generally positive way for decades, yet we're not starting We've just started to move now, thanks to the efforts of Elizabeth Dion and restructuring among the municipal departments. We've talked about senior tax relief for years, and we haven't done enough. And especially during and since the pandemic, I hear the broad base of residents feels at arm's length from our local government, and I feel that too. If elected, what will be your top priorities? My first, I have three, but my first one is gonna be a little long and it's important. I expect the current select board to fund an economic feasibility and opportunity studies, but based on that data, I urge us to complete a new master plan focused on economic development within one year. So my big, uh, my big goal is I'm gonna call the plan to 10. And while my leadership style is not overly directive, I do want to talk about some of the core values or things that that might include. One is preserving open space and our historic buildings. This probably means building up a bit uh, rather than out, and it probably means mid-rise, not high-rise. It means rezoning to allow for more mixed use, multi-unit, mid-rise housing and commercial space, which increases tax revenues. It means business-friendly initiatives to attract small businesses, especially restaurants and cafes, that boosts revenues even beyond the property tax through things like meals tax. It allows develop, allowing for development of boutique hotels which have a proven tax advantage. It means taking advantage of the state law changes like the Municipal Empowerment Act that has been proposed that allow for additional sources of revenue. It means encouraging mixed use development along corridors and creating vibrant neighborhoods with desirable amenities. And it means forming benefit districts to manage parking, a new tool that was allowed by the 2016 Municipal Modernization Act that ensures that the, uh, we reinvest in the surrounding neighborhood and that investment shows up in curb appeal and tree plantings and sidewalks. We're talking vibrant neighborhoods and businesses that are best friends. That's where buyers and renters wanna live. This is also where property values rise the fastest and I see we can create this for Belmont. I've led with this. Number one, this is my big important focus. Number two, along the way, we'll continue investing in operational efficiency. This includes implementing many of the recommendations from the Structural Change Impact Group report, which I mentioned earlier, go to 02478.org, and the Collins Center reports. We will also find more cross-department commonalities. And number three, I will focus on goals and challenges that we all have in common. Community is an us sport multiple generations, and all the people. And I do this with a relationship with the residents that keeps you in the loop. This is a people-first vision, and without people, a town of homes is just a bunch of empty buildings. Where do you stand for the override? It's going to be in our ballot this April 2nd. Yeah, this is the, when I'm talking to residents, this is common, one of the most common things that they have questions about. 
the override. We must help our community pass this override. As I said in the January select board meeting, this is for the community that we want, even though it's not the taxes that we want. I am deeply empathetic that this may be the last straw for some of our residents, which is why we must follow through for our community, and I'll say a bit more about that in a bit. And where do you stand on the assessor's question? It will be um, elected or appointed? Yeah, I, I support the change. Uh, as I said at town meeting, uh, the process of assessing is a highly regulated and technical responsibility, but it's the everything else where I think we can improve quite a bit. I believe having a unified finance team uh, will help us better serve our residents, upgrade ancient technology, help you better understand your, uh, your tax assessment, and show progress on payment in lieu of taxes. Um, I've dug through the entire property database and I'm a technologist who deals with innovation, so I've seen how far behind our property website is and how we can better use this to relate and connect with our residents. How do you think Belmont can reduce its spending to prevent a need for another override? Yeah, uh, this is a tough one. It's on everybody's mind, right? We're a 95% residential tax-based community and this has always needed significant state funds and subsidies or delaying other important work uh, in order to balance our budget. And we have to change. And I'm deeply experienced at evidence-based decisions and policy making. And I'm gonna speak plainly because I believe residents deserve a more specific answer rather than be creative or find efficiencies. We're already doing that where we can and our employees are doing a lot with a little. Our municipal part, uh, departments are run on a skeleton crew, and no department feels like they're overstaffed. This is also why I'm focusing on growth. We're gonna align people towards medium, medium and long-term work that we have postponed, understaffed, and avoided because change is hard. I'm gonna say that again because it's so important. Change is hard, and that's why this is a people-first vision where we do it together. We must be ready to act whenever and wherever our economic opportunities arise we have to get out of our own way. We're gonna focus on people, we're gonna focus on our people and on our core competencies in areas where we're behind and have needed changes. Zoning, planning, regulatory reform, commercial development, technology. I think our website is one of the core functions that has become an interface for relating to our public, but we're, it's an area where we can really improve. There's security risk and environmental risks. We're gonna to have to pull employees into those important roles. And I'm a systems thinker, and that means in addition to focusing on people, I see how all this stuff plays together and can multiply and work together, and I see that we can do that too. And so I will work tirelessly to preserve what we have while we work to fulfill the 10% commercial tax base goal. How will you reach out to residents that are not really engaged in town affairs? and to foster more diversity, inclusivity, and participation. Yeah, I look, this, this is this, you've gotten to the heart of why I'm running for a select board. And it's an area where I think we can greatly improve. Like, like I said, during the pandemic, I think it accelerated this feeling of being arm's length with our local government. Uh, and I've been reaching out to residents before I was on any committee, before I wanted anyone's vote. Go to 02478.org, you know, I'm a, you know, walk the walk kind of uh, candidate and you know resident. Uh, you can ask my supporters who have relied on me for years uh, to look for data or know uh, where to look or why Belmont works a certain way. And I think the status quo can be so much better. This is a real driving core value for me. Um, that engaging residents is hard, but there's virtue in showing up and showing that we're trying and to keep trying and not just engaging the you know, those, those of us who have the time and the know-how to know when to show up and how and how to be loud about it, but reaching more broadly to all residents. Uh, and I, I think, you know, on the Warrant Committee, I've advocated repeatedly that we uh, reach more broadly than our stated mandate of advising town meeting because we need to be mindful that we can reach the broader base of residents who are following along. And I'm talking about, you know, things that you might consider pretty uh, basic, like having a shared email box that reaches all the members on the committee, or having an asynchronous feedback form so that uh, if you find public forums, which can be kind of loud and intimidating, uh, uh, loud and intimidating, uh, then you have a way to uh, speak up. 
and then providing like a measure of feedback, uh, say the number of first time callers that have reached us. So residents know that we're heard even if we didn't have a chance to reply. But change is hard and for people who don't already think in an entrepreneurial and innovative way, uh, it's going to take some time to uh, socialize these ideas and adapt to these kinds of changes. And then limited staff and open meeting wall requirements make it a little trickier to navigate as well. Um, and lastly, you know, in the warrant committee report, and I think in part, like a major reason I was appointed to the warrant committee in the first place is my focus on community and reaching residents and being accessible with those things. So the colorful visuals and the clean readable tables is probably my contribution. Um, and I think we can do a lot better to make our work accessible to the broader public, to broaden representation and voices, empower others, and post the documents that we use. Uh, I'm really excited for rebuilding the relationship with our residents uh, coming out of the, the pandemic, and I, I'm, this is a major driving inspiration for me. Matt, our town contends with various long-standing needs amid limited resources. How do you propose maximizing our funds to address criti critical areas like infrastructure maintenance, technology, wa wastewater management? Yeah, uh, this is something I think about every day and is the second big motivator for me running. It's, it's the people and it's the opportunity. We tend to focus on things we can see and understand, we call this the streetlight fallacy, um, and underappreciate the opportunity and value and risks of things that are less visible. Uh, so our environment, our water supply, building maintenance, services that you don't use. You know, you probably, if you don't go to the senior center, you may not realize how it's run with very few staff and a small budget. You know, if you don't have kids in the schools, uh, you may not be aware that you know, how much families and volunteer groups help and support core functions of our public education system. And these are all linked to making the pie bigger. And this is where the plan to 10 comes from and getting to 10% com uh, percent commercial tax base. Uh, it, that kind of mixed use development brings renewal to neighborhoods. It updates infrastructure. It modernizes energy efficiency. Uh, it upgrades utilities, it improves water management, uh, it speeds up electrification, and it brings us to a scale that sustains and improves the infrastructure that we want, that we've really struggled to sustain in, uh, uh, so far. Sidewalks, safer crossings, tree plantings, and vibrant local businesses. And so that's why I focus on a big important goal, it'll focus our work, it'll prioritize our time, and it will actually bring about the changes that we so desperately want. All right. Your first year will be um, involved in collaboration closely with Roy Epstein and Elizabeth Dion. How do you envision working with them? Yeah, I look, the select board is a team, and I admire Roy and Elizabeth both. Uh, I've worked with both of them before, uh, for example, uh, on how our pensions were performing and crossing safety. Uh, I appreciate Roy's attention to detail. He's caught stuff that we've missed. Uh, I'm grateful for Elizabeth's leadership, especially around commercial development. Uh, so we have overlap, but we also have differences. Uh, I bring a goal-oriented vision that will be a multiplier to the things that they have championed. I bring a broad relationship with residents that will bring our select board closer to the people and help ensure that our decisions are broadly representative. I've shown a willingness to empower others that keeps our volunteers engaged and uh, excited for what differences they can make for Belmont. I've shown a deep appreciation for our employees and how our town operates, and I have a willingness to speak up, learn, grow, change, and challenge, and innovate. In short, I compliment, I round out, and I magnify the best parts of our select board team, and I bring passion and renewed energy in areas we can improve. We need Matt Taylor in the room for this to happen, and I ask for your vote. Matt, what do you think are the most pressing problems the select board is currently facing and how will you contribute to make them better? Yeah, I think about this every day. So I think step one is supporting and accelerating the work that has already started. I believe we can have a commercial growth focused master plan within one year, including the economic feasibility and opportunity assessments. My big important goal is has a close friend uh, following through on operational efficiency 
And lastly, I'm committed to core values of our community, like quality education that excels at the core functions, keep students here with their peers, and we can further optimize by working closely with all departments. And I urge you to go to mattforbelmont.com and see the long list of quality comments describing why people support me and the growing list of names who say I'm the candidate that can deliver this. Thank you, Matt. It was really nice to get to know you. Please go to the camera and tell our viewers why should they vote for you on April 2nd. Oh, thank you. Hi, my neighbors. My name is Matt Taylor. And a vote for Matt Taylor is a vote for goal-oriented progress toward a 10% commercial tax base. A vote for Matt Taylor says you want vision and leadership in addition to a broad understanding of how our town operates. A vote for Matt Taylor says you want proactive communication with residents and welcome in the first-time callers. You want a select board member who will actively work to keep you in the loop. I expect to earn your vote and I expect to earn it every day after. I'm Matt Taylor, and I believe your vision for Belmont can be our vision for Belmont. Every yard sign, every forwarded email, every endorsement, every statement of support shows our community is ready for change. To be the generation who did, we often look back and say, why didn't we start sooner? But now, I think we are the generations who will look back and say we were the ones who did. Come to mattforbelmont.com and follow me, and we can join together and make the brightest possible future for Belmont. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Good luck with the campaign. It was a pleasure being here with you. Thank you. Thank you for joining in to Belmont Journal. That was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.